Hi, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about privacy. This is a topic that should be on every developer's radar and not just from the perspective of code. What people share and with whom they are sharing it should always be up to the users. It is our duty as developers to protect our users' privacy, give them control over their information and help them to make informed decisions. I've been in contact with Sebastian Zimek and part of his research team at Wesleyan University. They design and develop privacy tech for mobile and web apps and have a remarkable view on the intersection of software development and human aspects of computing. Here's what Sebastian told me about that. Um, you know, we, we are not a purely technical school and you know, what I try to, uh, try to emphasize you know, when I teach is you know you can't think the technology without thinking about values such as privacy or you know other uh, other human aspects of computing really um, and so we need to bring these two things together we cannot just say okay here is our platform and now you deal with it right society we have to think about these values such as privacy and incorporate them into the software development process but let's say you're a freelance developer and your customer wants you to integrate a login with Facebook or a Google option. Or what if you need to integrate another third-party library like Ad Colony that lets your client monetize his or her new app? All of these companies made their own decisions on how to work with the user data your app generates and you should at least know about that. This is a difficult task and it can be tedious, but thanks to the new tool developed at Wesleyan University, this got a whole lot easier. It is called Privacy Flash Pro and it's completely free. And what it does is it goes through your Xcode project files, analyzes them and identifies third-party libraries that cause privacy issues or looks for permissions you request from your users. After the analysis, you're presented with a pre-filled questionnaire based on the project analysis. You can manually make adjustments and complete the form to build a custom privacy policy that is tailored to your app. Creating such a privacy policy is not just a great service that you can offer to your customers if they don't have their own legal department, but this is also great for you to actually see the privacy implications of using certain libraries or using specific app capabilities. I also asked two of the developers of Privacy Flash Pro about their philosophy of their work and here's what they told me. Or at least the general philosophy with Privacy Flash Pro is what I'm talking about is to make privacy a more centralized part of development. So in the same way that, you know, we think about, we learn about a data type, we should also be thinking about the privacy concerns. And that's not an easy task. So our, so our, our idea of Privacy Flash, okay, we understand that privacy is not going to be your number one concern. And I think that's okay because there's, you know, you don't get paid for having a great privacy policy, but it's important. And so with Privacy Flash Pro, it's kind of an in-between where you're definitely doing more because you are taking the time to download Privacy Flash Pro or, or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, you don't have to write the whole privacy policy. We're doing that for you. You don't have to go through all your third-party libraries. We're doing that for you. So I think the, the idea of, a, of an in-between and like a middle ground between privacy and practicality is really important. Yeah, uh, just Privacy Flash Pro, we're trying to help the user and tr showing, you know, how how the app is using certain permissions. But additionally, we're also showing the developer, you know, giving them a, a more personal connection to how they're using different third parties and how they're treating different permissions and bringing that to a more personal level, level to the developer um, and giving them more care to those certain privacy things well, hopefully um, that will reflect to the user as well. Knowing all this, let's have a look at how you get Privacy Flash Pro and how it works. Now to get Privacy Flash Pro, you can head over to their GitHub page. Um, it is linked in the video description below. And in this repo, you will also find tons of information about Privacy Flash Pro, as well as some guides to install it or using Privacy Flash Pro. And there are basically two ways you can use it. Either you can use the package release or you can install it from the source files yourself. Um, if you're doing that, what you will need 
as Python 3 installed on your machine um, to just give that a quick test. If you really have Python 3 installed, just open up your terminal and uh, hit or enter Python 3. And if you get the Python idle here, um, then you are good to go to perform your installation from the source files. Uh, but it is also really convenient to just go and grab the release section here and just install the packaged version right here by downloading um, this zip archive. And once you open Privacy Flash Pro, um, it is... Um, not going to launch probably because it's coming from an unidentified developer, uh, but that's not a big deal. Just hit your system preferences, go to the uh, security and privacy tab, um, and there you can find this little button here, open anyway, and you're good to go to open up Privacy Flash Pro. Uh, once you did that, what you get is this browser window here, um, and here you can select your um, Xcode project that you'd like to analyze. So what I'm going to do is just selecting um, one of the sample projects that you can also find on the GitHub page. And if we have a look at this sample project, um, you will notice that in the P list, there are several permissions that we're getting asked for. For example, the calendar, camera, motion usage, photo library. And you will also see that there is, um, that this project uses CocoaPods to actually use the framework from Ad Colony um, to use that in the project itself. So with that being said, uh, what we are trying to do in Privacy Flash Pro is selecting the folder where our Xcode project is actually located, hit OK, and then just start the analysis. And what you now get is a really convenient wizard um, that guides you through the process of creating your policy, your privacy policy um, that you will see on the right. So if I enter um, my app name here, my cool app, then it automatically updates on the right. You can hit the export policy button at the bottom if you're finished getting an HTML file that you can integrate into your own design onto your website or just copy and paste it to a document. And if you're interested in the privacy laws that are respected here and um, the privacy laws that Privacy Flash Pro is based on, you will also find tons of information. And just going back, um, you will see that you also get tons of information about each process or each step in this questionnaire by just um, moving your cursor over these little eye symbols uh, to get a tooltip that helps you to actually fill out all of the questions. And as you can see, um, there are a lot of things already pre-filled right here, so it detected that we're using the camera. But if you're also using the photos or accessing the photo library of your users, then you can also just activate that right here and add this permission and it will also be added to your privacy policy and it will even use the text that you specified in the info p list. The Privacy Flash Pro also detects third-party libraries like Ad Colony here and also tells you exactly where this is located in your project. So this is very helpful to just have a look at what you're using um, and how it is used and also the permissions that these third parties are actually requesting. So uh, Ad Colony is requesting the calendar usage and so this is also add it to your privacy policy. And just looking at this, you might recognize that this part of your job has just gotten a lot easier. And this is Privacy Flash Pro. I think it's an extremely valuable tool for app developers. And if you are interested in privacy and its implications for society, then be sure to subscribe because I'm going to do a small series on privacy and the responsibility of software developers very soon. Anyways, I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.